It's a Manscaped Monday here on the 49ers Report, and for the best men's grooming products, the same men's grooming products that your San Francisco 49ers use, go to manscaped.com slash 49ers, enter the promo code 49ers, and that allows you to get 20% off plus free shipping. Let's get into the latest 49ers news and rumors, and let's kick off today's show by talking about Trey Lance and his mechanics. Is the team adjusting his mechanics to get him ready for, ready for his rookie season? Excuse me. I'm going to go ahead and give this four Shanna hats because I actually believe this to be true. This goes back to prior to the NFL draft. The biggest knock on Lance, the biggest concern from NFL evaluators, scouts, and general managers across the league were about his mechanics. And sometimes at North Dakota State, they got out of whack, which led to some inaccuracy. The athletic ability, arm strength, speed, him being a physical presence at the quarterback position are certainly there, those qualities, and they pop off the page at you. But it's really the mechanics that are the biggest concern for Lance as he develops throughout his NFL career. Certainly worked on that during rookie minicamp as well as OTAs. And when he's been away from the team facility because the 49ers did cancel all offseason workouts until training camp in late July, he's been working with world-renowned quarterback coach Quincy Avery. This rumor comes from Jeremy Fowler of ESPN. And he said this over the weekend about Lance, his mechanics, and how the 49ers have been working with him. I'm told San Fran spent much of the OTAs and minicamp working on Trey Lance's mechanics, making sure things were compact. And the reason is they wanted to get that down so that in training camp they can unleash the full arsenal. They can show him off as a runner. They don't want to put him in harm's way and have him take too many hits, but they love the dimension he can bring to Kyle Shanahan's attack because they couldn't do it with Jimmy Garoppolo. They could do it with Lance as a runner or a passer. Couple things of note there. I think the 49ers could have plans to implement Lance in the offense as a running threat, kind of like what the New Orleans Saints have done with Taysom Hill. I don't like doing that all too much, but he does have that skill set, and it does add another dimension to Kyle Shanahan's offense, so I think it could be dangerous in that regard. But there have also been clips coming out on social media over the last week and change of Lance throwing to Mohamed Sanu, as well as him working with some quarterback coaches across the country, guys who people in league circles really, really respect. It has me really, really excited. I'm seeing that the mechanics are being fine-tuned. The footwork is on point. His delivery looks smooth. And the guy can just let it rip. There was one throw I saw him make, flick of the wrist, 50, 60 yards, pinpoint precision. And I'm like, my goodness, this is what Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch saw when they watched him at two of his pro days at North Dakota State. They're excited about him. I'm excited about him as well. What do you think? Do you think he makes over or under five starts this year as a rookie? Get your votes in in the comment section down below. Type O for over or type U for under. Is Trey Lance the best backup in the National Football League? Come on, are we really having this discussion? This only gets one Shanahan. I don't even know why we're talking about Trey Lance as a backup. CBS Sports is. They put together a list of the top backup quarterbacks across the league. Trey Lance came in at number one. Justin Fields at number two. The only reason they're there is because Trey Lance is behind Jimmy G. Fields is behind Andy Dalton. And it all came from CBS Sports' Cody Benjamin. Basically what he did, he ranked every backup quarterback going into this year. Put Trey Lance atop the list at number one. I mentioned him being ahead of Justin Fields, also ahead of Mac Jones. And look, you look at this list right now, and it's like, well, duh, from a pure skill set standpoint, from an upside perspective, yeah, Trey Lance would be at number one, but he's not a prototypical classic backup quarterback like a Teddy Bridgewater is, Jacoby Brissett is, or a Case Keenum is. Like, those guys define the word backup. Trey Lance and Justin Fields... They don't. That's why I'm only giving this one Shanna hat. But this is what Cody Benjamin had to say about Lance being at number one on that list. Don't scoff. No, Lance has never set foot on an NFL field. And yes, rookie quarterbacks struggle, even the good ones. But there's a reason Kyle Shanahan moved up to take him number three overall. This kid looks like the real deal, both physically and mentally. At 21, he offers a world of potential as a dual threat with big game experience. Jimmy Garoppolo may have a firmer handle on San Francisco's playbook and the nature of the the NFL, but Lance offers far more upside, not to mention within a pretty nice setup. He could take over sooner rather than later. With some of what Cody Benjamin said there, I'm with him. Like, I do think it's realistic that Lance could take over for Jimmy G 
earlier rather than later. I think it all comes down to training camp as well as the preseason. And if Trey Lance wows this coaching staff, they're not going to keep him on the bench. They're going to debut their stud and their crown jewel, the number three overall pick from the 2021 NFL draft right from the jump. And they're high on him because of what he did at North Dakota State, but also what he did during his pro days. Like 30 touchdowns to one pick for his career passing numbers. And then you go back to what Jeremy Fowler had to say about Trey Lance being a dual threat option, him being the Taysom Hill in this 49ers offense, like what uh, Taysom Hill has done with the Saints. The, the running numbers there indicate that if Lance isn't ready as a passer, maybe he could be involved in this offense as a runner. I know a lot of people don't like that, but if it makes this 49ers offense even more dangerous, more explosive, and kind of gives the defense something else to think about, Kyle Shanahan's going to use that at his disposal. So is Trey Lance a top five backup, or top backup, excuse me, in the NFL right now? Like the top guy, according to Cody Benjamin. Let me know. Type Y for yes, type N for no. Again, this, uh, this list doesn't make all that much sense to me, but get your votes in right now. If you've seen the videos of Trey Lance ripping the football, you know he throws a really pretty deep ball. If you want to have pretty balls, the Manscaped Lawnmower 4.0 is your answer. And the good news is you get 20% off plus free shipping on the best men's grooming products from Manscaped, including the brand new Lawnmower 4.0. If you go to manscaped.com slash 49ers and enter the promo code 49ers. I love versatility and variety in my life. That's what the Lawnmower 4.0 offers. Four interchangeable blades, a battery life that lasts forever. It is waterproof as well. And also there's a light. So if you go into the nether regions and you can try to navigate to see what you're doing, the light allows you to do that so you can pluck and shave every single hair that's down there. But I go back to the variety standpoint and versatility to the Lawnmower 4.0's game. You can use it on your balls on your chest, on your sideburns, on your hair. It is really the complete package. So once again, I'll go to, uh, I'll leave this link in the description as well as the comments for this deal, 20% off pl plus free shipping, thanks to Manscaped. Is Tom Brady dragging Jimmy Garoppolo? Can't wait to get into this one. Gonna give this one three Shanna hats because I think there might be some truth to it. Let's explore further. So Tom Brady was on the shop on HBO. I think that episode actually comes out later this week. That's LeBron James and Maverick Carter show. They bring in big time celebrities as well as athletes. And they basically sit down at a barbershop and they chop it up. And that's what Tom Brady uh, was a part of in this episode. And so he appeared on the episode and he discussed the free agency process last offseason going into the 2020 season, which we, we all know how that ended with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers hoisting the Lombardi Trophy. And Tom Brady mentioned how in the free agency process, a team backed out at the end and it caught him by surprise because they decided to go with the quarterback who Tom Brady doesn't think, frankly, is all that good. And here's the direct quote from the snippet coming out of that episode on the shop. One of the teams, they weren't interested at the very end. I was thinking, you're sticking with that mother effer? Okay, we got some juiciness here. So as we know, Tom Brady likes to keep receipts, right? He's very similar to Michael Jordan in that regard, where anybody who doubts him, Tom Brady is going to remember that individual, and then he's going to do everything that he can in his power to prove them wrong. I'm thinking that Tom Brady was talking about Mitchell Trubisky, who is no longer on the Bears with a playoff-ready roster, who is now a backup on the Buffalo Bills. But let's investigate this further as we're doing some Watergate-like journalism work here. Teams linked to Tom Brady in 2020. The Chicago Bears, so okay, Mitchell Trubisky was the starter, maybe Nick Foles, but I think Tom Brady might have been talking about Mitchell Trubisky. The Los Angeles Chargers, they moved forward with Tyrod Taylor as their starter. He wasn't talking about Justin Herbert because Herbert hadn't played a game yet. The Tennessee Titans were another team that I guess were rumored to be interested in Brady. Was he talking about Ryan Tannehill? I don't know. He came off a really impressive 2019 season in which he led the Titans to the AFC Championship game. It's definitely not the New Orleans Saints who flirted with bringing Tom Brady in because he's not going to disrespect one of the goats in Drew Brees. Las Vegas Raiders? I don't know if I'll go as far as to say that Derek Carr is a scrub, and I think Tom Brady is a pretty smart football player to know Derek Carr Carr isn't a scrub either, but then there's the San Francisco 49ers. At that time, they were coming off that Super Bowl appearance when they went down, of course, to the Kansas City Chiefs. Jimmy Garoppolo 
was Tom Brady's backup with New England, of course got traded to the Niners and had a really good 2019 season, helping lead the Niners to the promised land where they couldn't finish the deal and win that ring. It's been said that Brady and Garoppolo have a pretty good relationship, so I don't think in that clip he was talking about Jimmy G either, but what do you think? Does Tom Brady have beef with Jimmy G? Type 1 for yes, type 2 for no. Get your rumored comments and votes in the comment section down below. I'm definitely going to go back to the comment section and see what you guys say because I want to see where you lie on this one. For the best 49ers coverage on the entire internet, the entire globe, the entire stratosphere, make sure you turn on your notifications and subscribe to the 49ers Report by Chat Sports. A big thank you to all of you for helping us get past 36,000 subscribers, but this is what I want you to do next. About 20% of the 36K who are subscribed to the channel have your notifications on. So hit that bell, turn on your notifications. Therefore, anytime we push out a video, anytime we go live, you will be notified.